All right, what's going on guys? You're probably wondering why I'm sitting here with my dash all disassembled. Well, that's because we are getting rid of this old one, which happens to only have the RPMs work and that's it. Nothing else, no fuel, no speed. None of it works with this replacement one I have purchased and uh, happened to roll back the miles on. And that's because getting the Gen 5 swap from TCS, dropping the car off on Saturday, and I'd like to be able to track the miles on the rebuild. And because the miles are already exempt on the title, I'm not really too concerned about it. So nothing wrong there. Um, I'm gonna teach you guys how to roll back the miles today. Uh, this one, since that right there was the good one I did, I took a lot of time on it. Um, I'm gonna show you guys how to do it on this one in case I mess up. I'm not too concerned about it, but let me put this back together and then I will show you how to disassemble this one and start the rollback. All right, what's going on? We're back. Uh, for some reason, my phone overheated while I was recording the dash install, but twisted the key, everything works as it should. Um, the battery is slowly starting to die, so that is a problem right now. Uh, we can see there, all zeros on the clock, just waiting to load her up on the trailer and get her to TCS. All right, so next I'm going to show you how to roll back your miles using this. You can see me there holding my little my little camera tripod. So first step, taking this apart, right? So we're gonna remove these four screws. One, two, three, four, all Phillips head. And then we're gonna take off the face here and get to the insides. Let me do that real quick. All right, so we got those screws off. Next thing we have to do is unclip all these little black clips to separate the glass from the face and to get rid of this control board on the back. Pretty easy stuff. This entire job you can really just do with a Gerber. Um, <clears throat> I use a Phillips head for that part, but I'll show you where the Gerber comes into play once we get on the inside. So let's pop this outside part off real quick. So here we are. We separated the front from there. The Speedometer part kind of exploded out of there because I took the, the screws off first, but that's not a big deal. It sets on these uh, three little pegs here, one, two, and three, uh, in order to keep it in place. So we'll pop this off out of here. And this is what we're going to be working with. Here is our actual speedometer. I'll be showing you how to take that apart. Quick little side note for you is if your speedometer isn't working, you can do this little swift deal, right? So you'll go all the way over, you'll feel a little bit of resistance, and then you can let it go and see where it will fall. This speedometer doesn't work, so this one's falling below zero, but when you uh, when you do it, it, you'll see like it might stop here, so you can just take it and drag it down to line it back up at zero. Because you might, while doing this, you might bump it, and it will cause it to fall down, or see how it goes way down here now so just bring it back just go like that down to zero and you're back in line so now what you have to do is get these metal little bars here away from the plastic what i do for that is i use this little gerber tool you can just snap these little plastic pieces off this really doesn't take much effort as you can see it just popped right off do the same on this side i'm gonna try to be a little bit more careful just so i have a little reference guide you can see where I'm chopping off right there on each side just so I don't mess it up too much so it has a place to sit when I'm done and I put it back together so hopefully I don't break too much of this off there we go so now nice and I left a little spot there where I could slide it back in so now we're left with the actual odometer it's important to note that these black bars here are what rest on the bottom so when it sits like this, these are the numbers that you see. This is the current reading. Also, make note, there's this little black ring here. The black plastic piece that we take off will slide back underneath, like on the bottom side of that. So as this wheel spins, it jumps this little thing, the little teeth there on the gears, which cause it to read the miles. All right, so first step, you lift this little black piece off. 
being very careful. And or you could grab it by the back here, like this. How I'm doing it, and just pop it off, right? So now you have all these little teeth that these things were set in. So when you line them all up like that, to where the gear could sit on it, the little black piece we just took off, and it makes a line, and you screw it onto the front. Again, that's how that's that's the current reading. So what we have to do. I figure out the easiest way to do this is when you pull this back a little bit right here. This separates the gears. So in order to get it to read zero again. You have to pull back a little bit and spin the two to get to two, All right? So we'll line these two teeth up, pull these gears apart a little bit on the next one, and you want to work from the right up, the right to the left. So line that up, boom. Both twos are lined up again, so they line it up again. Now there's a two. You want to really make sure those teeth are all lined up. Go to the next one, holding it with your hand, pulling to the left a little bit to release the gears. It can get a little janky. Spin it all the way around to a two. Make sure they catch. Boom. Same thing for the next one. Find those teeth that it sits in. Grab it. Pull it apart. Go all the way back to the two. Boom. We got a two. And look at that. Our final two. So now we'll hold it all together. And look at that. We have all zeros. Final thing to do. See, it's very sensitive though. You have to make sure all these are lined up perfectly. Right, and it helps if you use your fingers to kind of press on there and press them all against the gear to the right. So once we do that, we'll take our little piece here that we had, kind of slide it in between our thumbs. My hands are real shaky because I did this yesterday for hours and it kind of messed my hand up. And we'll kind of press it and we'll let it rest inside all these teeth. So this is where it gets a little risky. Whoops, oh, cut on the wrong part, see? Press it on there so it holds all its teeth, pulls in between them all, bada boom, bada bing, like that. So now it's like that. Right, so I have all twos, we spin it around, all zeros. Next step is to take your little thing, now it's all lined up, all zeros, we'll bring it back into the odometer. So you want to make sure. These little teeth here are on the bottom, so they're going to line up down here. And this little gear here has to sit on that little noodle looking thing, that little rotini noodle, right? Because when that thing spins, it's what spins the gears. So we'll drop this in here, make sure it's pointed down, make sure these gears are on there. Try to spin the gear a little bit. If it doesn't spin, that means that you're lined up on those gears because that's what's going to be moving it. And then have it up forward a little bit. See, I have it accidentally off a little bit, so it's reading all the nines. So we'll pick it up, twist it back a little more, make sure it's perfect up and down. And on the front, you can see we have all zeros. The gear isn't spinning, which means it's in line with those teeth like I talked about. And all you gotta do is take a little bit of hot glue and hot glue it on there and there. Then reinstall it and you're good to go. So thanks for watching this video. If you found it useful or you kind of want to follow this MR2 project that I'm working on, make sure to like it, subscribe it, ring the bell if you want to get notifications whenever I upload new videos. Uh, I tend to do a couple helpful things like this. I'll post it on the forums and a couple of the Facebook pages if you guys are interested. And uh, thanks for watching.